Hello, this is attempt two because I think my first attempt went too slowly. So I will be conducting a faster one this time with more details. And I will be also reading a lot of things on the page because I don't have a script and that's all I have. This will likely be a lot more easier to listen to than if you read the whole document with your own eyes because it's very boring to read this whole document. So you might need someone else to kind of guide you through. As a disclaimer is that I myself only obtained all these informations and along with my friend from the websites. I did not know the full process and I will not guarantee that all the information in this document is correct, but it is the best we have right now. Okay, so according to the rubric, there are a few cri cri um, criteria which I will read today and now is that you need to know protein structures and post translational modifications. For this, um, for this thing, we have gone over protein structures in the class. The only part that's, that we need to know is the post-translation modifications. Then we have bioenergetic networks and, so, and fermentations, which I'll, I haven't wrote yet, but I will explain shortly, such as Calvin and Krebs cycle and photosynthesis, of course. The difference between C4, C, C, C3, C4, and camp plants. Membrane structure, and then cancer, relating to apoptosis and cellular homeostasis. Different cell organelles, a more complicated version of cell organelles, that are skeleton and how they were formed. And then we have cell wall structure of different domains of life. It's very interesting that we also have different types, different classes of enzymes, and then cell cycles and the proteins and the enzymes that were behind, that would propel the cell cycle to occur. Cell receptors and signal transduction. In these available resources, this document gives you past questions. This is microorganism relating to specifically bacteria, archaea, and protistas. This is some diagram pictures. This document contains the other half that you might need to know. Okay, I can load that. This is the different types of techniques. I have finished writing half of it, but the other half still need to be researched. And then you can put it right here. Okay, we have the post translational modifications as phosphorylation. I will just read all of this and I will, spec I will specify when it's a bit confusing it is the attachment of a phosphate group to another molecule. And it's used to used to fuel different functions of the cell. So with phosphorylation, a function can be turned on, can become active because of the attachment of a phosphate. If you want to know the mechanism behind this, behind this is, is a phosphate group has a negative charge. And with a negative charge, yeah, it it kind of powers the the functions up. Yeah, just, just know that. Gly glycosylation is when carbohydrate is attached to a protein or a lipid. They form a glycoprotein, and this occurs in the smooth segment of the endoplasmic reticulum. This uh, ubiquitylation is attaching these ubiquitous proteins in other, in, to another protein in order to regulate cellular processes. There are three, three steps to this, but know that the thing that the thing that is able to conduct each is the activating enzyme, the conjugating enzyme, and the protein ligase. We have cleavage, which is removal of peptide bonds. Recall that a peptide is a chain of amino acids linked together by peptide bonds. This is you so that the, uh, the protein doesn't have a really weird starter. Methion is this amino acid is used as usually as a starter of protein sequence. Nitrosylation is adding an O group to the O group. No need to know this. Methylation is adding a methyl group, CH3, likely to a DNA strand so that the gene is less expressed. Acetylation is adding acetyl to DNA, which promotes the gene to be expressed. So it's the opposite of methylation. You don't need to know the rest. Proteolysis is similar to cleavage, but with the help of an enzyme. Biogenetic network networks is catabolic, is the same of exergonic. So it exerts energy when the, re when the reaction occurs. So it produces energy. Anabolic and endergonic takes in energy to make the reaction happen. 
Photosynthesis is the way that plant is able to get its energy. It's, and all of this is saying is basically saying that it uses two different uh, parts. Well, well, generally two different parts. is a light-independent reaction and a light-dependent reaction. The light-independent reaction is something called the Calvin cycle, and it uses an enzyme called rubis rubisco in order to power it. In a light-independent reaction, this reaction can occur at night. All right? And it doesn't use sunlight, of course, by the name. And all you need to know is that uh, sunlight is absorbed by the chloroplast, and specifically red and blue light. But green light is reflected by the chloroplast, which is why leaves appear green. The reactants of the light-dependent uh, um, segment are the carbon dioxide, ad adenosine diphosphate, and phosphate, and NADP. And the products will be oxygen, ATP, and NADPH. In the Calvin cycle, which is a light independent reaction, the reactants are carbon dioxide and NADPH. And the products will be glucose plus NADP+. You see how this is a cycle? Is that one, and once NADP is produced, it goes back into the light dependent cycle, and it cycles again and again and again. All right. And then this is the photosynthesis and the Calvin cycle. The Krebs cycle is similar to this, but it's the complete opposite. It takes in glucose and oxygen in order to produce carbon dioxide and water. As you can, as you can, as you imply, yeah. And you can read over this if you really want to know how it happened, but you might be tested. One question might be about this, and I guess this is way too specific. For real. In the plants, we have three different categories, the C3, C4, and CAM plants based on how they were able to obtain energy. So in, in plants, photorespiration is a really bad process. It's a bad cycle that happens because the enzyme rubisco is binding to oxygen instead of carbon dioxide and, um, and the chloroplasts so that it wastes un energy unnecessarily to cope with the fact that it binds to oxygen instead of carbon dioxide because rubisco needs to bind to carbon dioxide in order to create energy but when it binds to oxygen it needs energy for that process to happen and so c3 plants which is the majority of the plants photorespirate and so they they don't they, they don't really survive that well compared to C4 plants, which are plants that were developed in the deserts and plants such as corn and sugar canes, is that they separate light dependent and independent reactions. In C3 plants, the light independent and light dependent reactions occurs at the same place, which is the mesophyll, but in C4 plants it occurs at the mesophyll and the bundle sheath. So photorespiration would occur less like we almost not occur and in cam plants which is the biggest boss of this is that they smart and they open stomata to get carbon dioxide at night so it reduces vaporization at the same time mm -hmm. uh at the same time reduces photorespiration one thing you need to know is that Calvin cycle can occur because it's light independent. Calvin cycle can occur at night. Membrane cell structure, it's all that we've talked about in the class. It's a lipid bilayer and it's semi permeable. It's made out of lipids. It had a hydrophilic head and a hydrophobic tail. Cholesterol is found in the cell membrane in order to make it more rigid and so that the cell membrane doesn't fall apart. But too much cholesterol can make cell membrane a bit more stiffer than they should be and can lead to health issues. Glycoprotein and carbohydrate sugar are used for cell signaling. Global proteins, most notably the immunoglobulins, are immune proteins that is instructed to take in that, that that's most prevalent in T4 helper cells, which uh, engages in endocytosis in order to kill bacteria and cleans the body.
from harmful microorganisms. So memory receptor cells, which allows um, molecules to pass through after they're binded to the receptor proteins, most notably a ligand-gated channel, and this and these molecules are able to pass through by facilitated transport. This, this is a process that does not take up energy at all. So it moves around on a concentration gradient. Uh, for through cell receptor protein, this is also how viruses are able to get in. For example, I think HIV binds to CD4 cells, something similar to that, but viruses bind to these cell receptors and they go in and they repl replicate their own genome inside the whole cell. And eventually, yeah, the whole body is infected with these cells, with these viruses. In integral membrane proteins are proteins that are permanently inside the inner membrane of the cell. Peripheral protein is the in, is the protein at the inner membrane of the cell that is able to detach itself and attach itself again. Active transports goes against the concentration gradient and uses energy to, of ATP in order to make this transport happen. All right, uh, and the sodium and potassium pump is a way that the cell is able to retain its polar its polar nature. So the cell prefer to be negative on the inside, to be more negative on the inside than on the outside. And when that is disrupted, it causes something called depolarization, which the cell needs to undergo some changes in order to bring its polar nature back. For cancer, we have, uh, for cancer is the uncontrolled division of the cells and it's due to genetic variations. The opposite of cancer is apoptosis, is when the cell chooses to die, to explode itself, or just die disappear because the body tells it to or the body or the cell detects that it itself has some sort of issues with it such as wrong dna copying uh, failure to create protein and just the cell is not healthy in general so it's using up body, the body's energy and the body doesn't want that so it first the process occurred because the chromatin or the chromosomes are condensed and then the nucleus explodes the membrane wrinkles so the shell shrinks inside until the membrane disappears and then the cell organelles are spilled out and they were engulfed by other cells the organelles here we have gone over them in class but if you need to see them they are in the microbe document in the first page important Organelles with complex structures, such as endoplasmic reticulum, has a smooth and a rough part. And thing is, the red blood cells, egg and embryos, do not have endoplasmic reticulum. The Golgi apparatus has three parts, the cis part, medial part, and the trans part. And the vesicles departed from the Golgi are coated by, by clathrin. So the vesicles, the bulbs, the um. Yeah, the buds out of the goji have clathrin protein. This, this is a protein as what protects these molecules. The plastids, they are used for photosynthesis and metabolic storage, and they these are for making and storing food. And they're likely cyanobacteria. Remember that plastids are only found in photosynthetic cells, such as plants. So chloroplasts, as what I have said before, is how sunlight is able to absorb. Leucoplasts and also chloroplasts stores food as well. So, and leucoplast is transparent and is found in plant roots, bulbs, and seeds. It's used for storing oil or starch. And it's transparent because oh, it doesn't reflect light, it doesn't need light. Chromoplasts are yellow or red, and they're storage of carotenoid pigments. So chromoplasts are flower petals, chloroplasts are leaves, and leucoplasts are the roots of a plant. Don't you know of this? Just, just skip all of them. Uh, maybe epigenetics might be useful if you want to know about antibiotic resistance, turning off genes and such. And in cell structure, there's a lot of different names of molecules here, a lot, a lot of compounds here as well. Yeah, it seems very complicated. However, 
um, plant cells have cellulose in the cell wall. And more specifically, it's a polysaccharide. So it's a poly sugar. There's a lot of sugar molecules to it. And these cannot be digested by humans, but can be digested by organisms who have B glycosidic enzymes, such as, um, when you see on you, such as termites, white ants, and wood rotting fungi, who's able to digest like wood bark, it's because they have B glycosidesis. So cellulose is also present in wood bark. And it's just a really tough sugar. Chitin is another polysaccharide that is found in the exoskeleton of arthropods and fungi. And it is a polymer of an acetoglucosamine units joined together by, you know, beta-1,4 glycosidic bonds. Yeah, it's impermeable to water. It's impermeable to water. And you probably don't know about animal cell membrane or Actually, I have no idea what this is. I'm not sure why I wrote that. And the RKS have the pseudopeptidoglycan in your cell wall, which is made out of an acetylsalicylic acid connected together by L-amino acids, and it has this ester bond. If you're not sure what ester or ether is, you can search up. It's a functional group. Yeah, more specifically, it has an acetylglucosamine acid. Yeah, and for bacteria, uh, also archaea and bacteria are different in many ways. You can search them up, and it's um, and archaea are more related to eukarya. But for bacteria, there are two different types of bacteria, or more specifically, there are three different types of bacteria: gram positive bacteria, gram negative bacteria, and acid fast bacteria. But they all have peptidoglycan, which is a compound that is made out of an acetylmuramic acid and an acetylglucosamine acid. And this is present in all three different types of bacteria, but for more specific cell structures, such as in, um, in gram-negative bacteria, they actually have two cell walls. Or, yeah, they have two cell walls, and they have something called the... Um, endotoxin, which is how once gram-negative bacteria explodes, all the lipopolysaccharides lipo, um, on the outside of the cell wall also explode, and it poisons the host with them. Okay, and enzymes, I think all of these enzymes are self-explanatory. Their name indicates what they do. Lyase is splitting of molecules without water. And this is important because hydrolysis is splitting of splitting of molecules with water, but lice is without water. That can trip people up. For cell cycle, since you had you did this part, I think you have a clear idea of what is going on below. Yeah, I, th I think you got this part quite well. So as you can see, interface. So um, it has interface. And then mitosis. So in the interface, it's going to three parts: G1 synthesis phase and growth two phase. Great. And then it undergoes cryokinesis and then um, cytokinesis. In the prophase, metaphase, and anaphase, and telophase. And when a question. Okay, here's the thing. In prophase, it's everything up to the point where the where the um, chromosomes are lined up in the middle. And metaphase is the um, the attachment of spindle fiber to the to the chromosomes. Anaphase is when the chromosomes are flying to either end, and telophase is when a cytokinesis occurs. There are different proteins that modulate this process. Most notably, the cyclins. They promote cell cycle and check if the cell is good enough to move on. There are four different proteins, and these names imply in which steps that they uh, participate in. And these proteins are essential in, in that they, they make the cycling dependence kinase to function. As well, the name implies kinase, this protein, it conducts phosphorylation. 
you can go to the beginning of the video if you don't remember what phosphorylation is. But they can uh, speed up and empower and they also regulate each different steps of the cell cycle. Remember receptors and signal transduction? There are three, the general three types is the ligand binds to receptor proteins, it goes transducted, and then the cell gives out its response. So the cells can, can communicate through direct contact with the cells sticking together, so like this, the membranes like fuse or something, and the gap junctions allows movement of ligand. So like the, it's like a hole between it's like two rooms that is separated by an open door and things can enter, go and in and out without any sort of need to actually exit the cell wall because their cytoplasm is fused together already. These three types of signaling, paracrine, autocrine, and endocrine signaling. There's three major classes types of receptors, the G protein coupled receptors, the enzyme coupled receptors and the ion channel receptors. For the G protein receptors is that it has three subunits, okay, alpha, beta, and gamma. It's very confusing here, but you can search it up. And let me read this to you is that the, when this protein is activated, all right, the alpha subunit separates from this protein when it's active and it interacts with other protein and then turn GTP back into GDP and then make the protein inactive again. So it interacts with other proteins and then the alpha subunit goes back to G protein coupled receptors. And there's also three types of G proteins, which is the GQ, GI, and GS. So GQ activates the enzyme phospholipase C and the and it leads to the, polar, the polarization of the cell. GS activates adenylate cyclase, and it is able to turn adenosine triphosphate into adenosine monophosphate. So this monophosphate thing can bind to another enzyme, and it could be regular subunit of kinase A. And so, yeah, and this catalyst is like general enzymes to activate reaction. So GS turns ATP into AMP. GQ causes the depolarization of the cell. And GI inhibits adenylate cyclase and causes negative feedback on protein GS. And this is used in apoptosis, which is a self-destruction of the cells. In the enzyme coupled receptors, we have receptor tyrosine kinase, which a special part is ligand bunch receptor, and the, the, and the this enzyme actually comes together, so it's called a dimerized part, and then they cross phosphorylate. So the um, they have ADP, right? So the so the phosphate unit goes on each end, so they can exchange ATP. And then the enzyme side becomes really well suited for the second binding messengers. For the associated receptors of tyrosine kinase is that they don't have any cellular enzymes, but they have cytoplasmic tyrosine kinase that phosphorylate target protein directly. So they don't need second binding messengers. For serine and theo th th 309 kinases is that uh, it's very confusing but all you need to know is that when when ligand binds also i managed to explain what ligand is ligand is uh it, it's basically saying a molecule so it's when something binds like ligand ligand binds when the molecule binds type 2 receptor phosphorylates and activates type 1 receptor that conducts phosphorylation so it's like a chain process it's like an allosteric reaction in enzymes and then we have ion channel ch channel receptors which is exactly what facilitated transport is Okay, this is a general picture of what these all are, and the other half, uh, lots of different steps. I have seen someone did go electrophoresis before, so I can explain that. Just, just let me know. A lot of, lots of confusing things going on here, and so the, this is really confusing. But hydrophilicity plot is the representation of relative hydrophobicity or hydrophilicity of amino acids. Based on the R side chain, and uses a hydrophilic. So we can search this up. It will look like a graph, lots of up and downs, and the positive 
peak, meaning that this amino acid is hydrophobic, and if it's negative, it means it's hydrophilic. You only need to identify if a uh, Ramachandran plot, by the way. All right, I think the rest is, is quite good. Oh, so I might need to say this. Is it um, the total potency is that this cell can form every single type of cells in the body, like 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 sex cells, like, um, like growth cells, skin cell, like hair cell, eye cells or something. And these only apply to embryonic cells within the first stages of division. Plur, plur, pluripotency is it can form all cells that make up the body well unipotency can only form one type of cell so these are different types of cells and the rest i still need to do the rest but what's the general direction of what it's going to be well thank you for um watching this by the way well i'll see you